Well, the caps and gowns have been popping up everywhere. CMU and Duquesne's graduations this past weekend. Pitts was earlier this month. So in honor of commencement May, we're having a little graduation party right here in our PTL kitchen. And Chef Crystal is slicing up a creamy classic that dates all the way back to the Victorian area. Wow. We're talking about red velvet cake. Look how pretty this is. I'm excited about this, what? Chef. It is one of my favorite cakes. Yeah. And I'm not a chocolate lover. But I love red velvet. And that's what red velvet cake is. Yeah. It's actually it chocolate, chocolate cake. Yes. And basically it's the chocolate and the acid. So there's buttermilk in there and there is vinegar. Oh, in okay. It, and it changes it to red. Now we put a little red food coloring in there to make it that really bright really red color. It. Okay. But yeah, it'll turn red on you. So okay. It's so uh, you want me to do this? You trust we're me? We're going to have some fun. <laughs> we're going to turn it on and it's going okay. to be exciting. So what we're going to do okay. is we're going to shield it. I have uh, sugar. I have butter. Oh, is that Go too? Ahead. It's all right. Really? You're we we got to make a mess. We're making okay. cake. Okay. So I've got butter. I've got sugar um, in here. Butter, sugar. Yeah, brown sugar and Am white I... sugar. Okay. Okay. Do, and so do, these are all dry ingredients. They're really, all the dry right? ingredients. And okay. what we're going to do, and we're not going to do it on TV, but you're going to whip this until it's really nice and fluffy, right? Okay. That's so the goal. about four minutes or so. So much longer than we have right now. Yes. Okay. So then what we're going to do is we're going to add in eggs. Okay. And then we're gonna mix it, but we're not gonna mix it because we're gonna stay clean. We're gonna okay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> For that's TV just what purposes, it is. We're, we're not gonna, gonna mix clean. it at home. You would mix you're it. You're gonna mix that. Okay. Okay. And, and then, then here's the red food you're coloring. You're gonna add in buttermilk. A buttermilk. Okay. And red food coloring. Okay. Okay. So you're gonna give that a good stir up. Okay. Okay. So once you get that all stirred up and it's whipped and it's really creamy looking and happy, I have flour, baking soda. Cocoa, okay. Okay. All in here. Flour, All right. Baking soda, cocoa. Salt. So you would add that into that goes into the, the, once you have the whipped up so mixture. So once you have it whipped up, we throw it in. We mix okay. it. Okay. And you can do it by hand. Just make sure your butter is nice and soft. Okay. And then you can whip it. So. And you said a little bit of salt is important. A little bit of salt because it brings out flavor. You have those flat, uh, flavored baked goods because people mm -hmm. go, oh, maybe we don't want to put any salt in, but it's really important to put some salt in there so that you have a balance of flavors. Okay. okay? All right. So once we make that, we go ahead and we pour it into our prepared nine inch pans, right? Mm -hmm. Just make sure you spray them well. Okay? okay. You don't want it sticking in there. You don't. You can put a little piece of parchment in the bottom, but it's not necessary if you get okay. a good spray on there. You want to bake it and then you let it cool for just about five minutes and then take it out and put it on a cooling rack. Important. Okay. okay. Because Let otherwise it, cool it will on a cool stick rack. in your pan. Okay. All right. So and now we're going to ice this. We're going to ice it. And the ways to do a cake that looks really kind of professional mm -hmm. um, is you want to trim a cake. So I put one layer down and I put a little dollop of frosting down on there. Okay. But you notice how whenever you have your cake and you start it and it's always a little uneven. Look at you. What you, you want to do is take your big long knife. That's why it's important to have big long knives. Right. Okay? And always watch your hand. I keep my hand flat. Okay, yeah. you can put it behind. But you want to make sure that you do that. Then there's exciting things you can do with those crumbs, okay? <laughs> I would let eat you them. know. That well, would yeah, be the exactly. Exciting thing I would do. It's good. <clears throat> okay. Nice big dollop in here. And you always want to make sure you get out to the sides, okay? So put okay. it all the way out to the sides. That's important. And then once you get it out to the sides, you're going to go ahead and put your top layer on, okay? And you want okay. a nice, good amount in there. Okay? Yeah, everybody loves and icing, then, right? So, uh, now I what? Do. what <laughs> <laughs> now, do you set this? You, I was going to ask you flip I it. I flip it. So you don't okay? have to deal with the icing, the That's cut portion. That's exactly it. And this side is smoother. So when you yeah. go to put your frosting on, you're not going to get crumbs all through. Crumbs yeah, no, that's all messy. Exactly. Yeah. So then the other thing you can do is put just a little bit of icing on it throw it in the refrigerator, and I mean a little bit. So it's what they call a crumb coat. It kind of catches your crumbs. So you do this in the beginning, you take and then put it into the refrigerator. So you get it all the way around. And you notice how there's crumbs in there? And that's okay. It's okay, but the frosting hardens up. Okay. Then you and come then... back with some soft frosting. Okay, and it's much, Spread much easier it over, to, to ice around, at that point. Much easier to ice at that point. Oh, interesting. Okay. So when okay. you do that, the other thing you want to do is you put your frosting in the end, and then you want to work from the middle out. And then you want to make sure you have a good amount. So whenever I do it, and I'm working out, and of course I'd have a lot more frosting on mm -hmm. there, 
but the way to get that nice sharp edge is you push that frosting out to the side. Mm -hmm. And then right and off. And then because you frosted the sides, then you can take you just sort of... and it gives you that nice edge around there. Well, it's already looking good. And you know what? You cut me a piece beforehand so it, I could try it. Exactly. And I'm so excited to try it. Uh, so, and you, look at all these say, other beautiful graduation cakes. you don't want to make cake, mm -hmm. you can always get cake. And I know I have folks that are like, Giant Eagle is my favorite cake. There's all these interesting designs that you can get that's lots of fun. Oh, they're, they're that's very my cool favorite and creative. There. That one's fantastic. This is fantastic. Good. I love this icing, too. It is so creamy and delicious. Cream cheese, butter, brown oh. sugar. And you could take the crumbs you have left, throw it around the edges to give it a little more pizzazz. Oh, look at you. <laughs> Always finding something to do with the crumbs, although I would have eaten them all. There would be none left. I understand. All right, that cake is delicious. And the link for this recipe can be found on our website, pittsburghtodaylive.com. Just use the recipe tab, and you can find past cooking corner recipes as well. As always, thank you, Chef Crystal. Well Any done. Time. All right. Until next time. Heather, we'll bring you some of this over there. Yeah, you remember how I told you that I don't like cake? Yeah, did you lie? No, not quite, but I do like cream cheese icing, and I will eat anything that has cream cheese icing on it. So if you could bring me a slice over. We're going to work on that. Okay, thanks, David. I got you covered. <laughs>